Good morning from yet another grey and murky day at La Lande. But as far as I'm concerned, it just makes the Christmas celebrations all that much snugger. As you'll know if you've been watching the Daily Christmas Diaries, my entire life at the moment is taken up with cooking, decorating, being with my friends and family. And it's a very, very busy time of the year at La Lande. But the most important thing, which I promised I would tell all of you about today, is the catastrophic news that we have had about the structure of the chapel and of the Grand Salon. In last week's Chateau Diaries, Amory told me that he thought we had a big problem in the Grand Salon and that one of the walls was weighing too much on a joist that needed replacing and that therefore he was going to have to make holes in that wall so that we could save the wall to take the weight off the joist so that he could replace it. However, he was still concerned about it and he was concerned about a beam in the middle of the room that is sagging. Now, People have been concerned about that beam pretty much since I moved in because it is sagging. But every builder that I've asked to look at it and every architect that I've asked to look at it has said, yeah, the beam is absolutely solid. Of course, it's sagged over the years, but it's not going anywhere in a hurry. It'll be fine for a few more generations. So I didn't worry about the beam. I just thought we'd have to live with a slightly sagging beam in the room. But Amri was really insistent that he wanted someone to look at it. And there was another architect, a new architect coming that day, the man who was dealing with the survey of the entire chapel structure. So Philip said to me, just ask the chapel architect to come and have a quick look at that beam. And I was being really stupid because I was so busy filming for Advent that I was just saying, look, it's fine. We've had so many people looking at it and I've just got to keep filming. But Philip was absolutely insistent. He was like, no, stop what you're doing right now and go and ask the architect. Amory's really worried about this beam. So I asked the architect to come in and indeed we do have a huge problem. The beam is, as we thought, not about to fall. But the walls above it might, because it's dropped so much that it's come away from the base of the wall above it. And then the wall has dropped a little. And so it has come away from the beam above it, which means that we now have a wall that's floating rather precariously. So the entire wall needs to come down. And there's still the original joist that Amory was worried about. And because we're removing the first wall, we're going to have to take down that wall to repair that joist as well, which means that now there are so many walls coming down. Almost all of the walls above the Grand Salon are going to be coming down. So two of my favourite guest bedrooms have to be totally destroyed before they can be rebuilt. Amory's been told he cannot work in the Grand Salon until a structural engineer has come to look at it and then we can start removing the walls above. So it's a huge setback of time and expense, which was already a huge blow to me when I heard about it. And then on the same day, the same architects who were actually here to look at the chapel looked at the chapel and discovered that there are cracks in the wall where you can see daylight. We couldn't see them because they're high up and it's only when you're very close to the wall high up that you can see daylight through them. They realised that the joints between the stonework outside needs to be looked at completely but they think there may also be problems with the buttresses because apparently at the base of the buttresses outside the chapel they can actually put their foot underneath which means that the water has been hollowing out the ground below it so it looks as though we have problems aside from the vault and the paintings which we knew about so the chapel job is getting bigger and bigger by the minute receiving all of this news in one go was extremely overwhelming and whilst it was happening I was making a video for my patrons last week. So I'll show you an extract from that video now and you'll you'll see what we were going through. We've just oh, discovered single. something absolutely catastrophic, way. far worse than we thought in the Grand Salon. So uh, it is a Christmas catastrophe. I feel ridiculous because I'm all dressed up. I was filming the advent calendar. I just finished filming the first video and I've discovered this. Uh, I'm, I'm really struggling to find the bright side right now. Just when I feel that we're about to see the first piece of panelling going in after all this time. Oh, I can't believe it. And the chapel's much worse than I thought. I'll admit that it was an incredibly bleak day, but all of the people in the house and all of my patrons have rallied around and I feel that I'm not alone in tackling this and that we can manage it one step at a time. Amory has been reassuring me that when it comes to the Grand Salon, it's nothing that he can't tackle himself. As for the chapel, that's very different. That's going to require specialists in the paintwork as well as builders. And we've ordered two surveys to tell us how to tackle all of that. Just those two surveys alone come to over 20,000 euros, which is more than the original chapel restorer had quoted to do the entire restoration of the chapel. So 
The whole chapel restoration is now in a totally different league. In fact, the people doing the survey of our paintings are also working on Notre Dame in Paris. After everything that's happened, I want to make sure we're going to the very, very best people to get this done. After starting the day by sharing that with you all, I think it's time for a cup of tea. Hello. 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 I have got tea, coffee and jammy dodgers and a towel for you. Oh, fantastic. And your charger that you left in the kitchen. All my pockets are full of goodies. Good, good. Goodie number one. <laughs> Excellent. I just ran out of juice, so that's good. Goodie Whoa. number two. What do you think of your new tower? I know, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. I was so impressed when I saw it. Really? Yeah. You like the colour? Love the colour. Tea and coffee time is over. What a gorgeous sight! Davy, when you said espalier trees were coming, I didn't think they were going to be that advanced. You do not skimp when you buy trees, do you? Well, you've got to invest in the correct places. They're beautiful. No, I totally agree with you. Oh, oh I'm feeling actually emotional. <laughs> do you like them, Kirsty? I do. They're, they're, they're a piece of artwork. They, really they are. And these are from Belgium? No, these are Dutch, actually. Just come to pay Philip a visit. <laughs> well, Belgium and the Netherlands are small countries, so they interchange <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> and what type of apples are they? I'm not sure. I have to wait for the bill to actually see the <laughs> name of them. to say I need to wait for the apples to grow. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I asked for cooking apples. Nice. Very, very mm. nice. Dutch apple pie. Oh, Selma made the best apple pie. Is it a biscuit base with almonds in oh, it? And oh, icy. It's beautiful. Now they are spectacular. How many are there? Four. Well, I'll tell you what, now that I'm looking at them, I think we could have more and make it more of a like a little covered thing and leave some so you can get out. But I just think they're so beautiful. We've got room for another seven. Well, no, then you, then you wouldn't be able to Then you wouldn't out. get out. <laughs> You'd be trapped. Yeah, but if you order seven, I'll just take them to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Honest. <laughs> Davy, would you like to take a turn about the pergo with me? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. I love it. It's like being in a little house. See, what do we prefer? This? Or this? I mean, that's very beautiful, but I, I definitely I prefer this. They're incredible. You start to get an idea of how the whole thing is going to come together. We might add a couple more next year. We're just debating that now. We're not sure how much we want it to be closed in, but wow. Have you noticed how much winter produce we've got? Yeah, I've yeah. never seen it like this it's, before. It's very impressive. It, uh, I'm not used to that. I and mean, I've seen quite a few vegetable gardens in my life. <laughs> Hang on, Kirsty. I think you've impressed even Davy. <laughs> <laughs> It's not just me though, it's the team. Yeah, look at that. Dream team girl, dream, dream team. And Umbeline. Yeah, and Umbeline. Umbeline. <laughs> Umbeline, yeah. She's on the vegetables, yeah. so. It's amazing it's what you've done, amazing. We've kept them going, it's, uh, it does look good. Yeah, and it will taste delicious all winter. It will. I mean, we've still got tomatoes on the plants in the greenhouse. It's crazy. I just don't understand what's happening this year. So mince pies for the humans. And of course, <laughs> treats. Ah, that's the leftover of my cardamom cake and the Christmas bread. Just the very base of it after we'd had the fondue from inside. So you see, even the chickens are enjoying the Christmas food. I think the stuffing's meant to go in the other end, though. Kirsty! <laughs> I didn't say that, Spurred, I didn't. <laughs> We've stopped for some delicious lunch, which Jose has made. Mm -hmm. French onion soup, this feels right. Great sunglasses. You've got quite oh, a few you. different ones, haven't you, Alexander? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, this is a whole new look. Uh, I wear them as a fashion accessory. <laughs> yeah, you look fabulous. Thank you, darling. <laughs> yeah, it's making me want to start putting some on as well. <laughs> <laughs> we could all wear them, my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What did you find in my use? Well, first of all, this one's strength. Look, look, look. Oh, have you lived without that? Yeah, I don't know. How has my son lived without uh, this? No one understands uh, how. What can this be? Oh, is it a nutcracker? Yeah, but it's completely wooden. That is a beautiful one. That's such a lovely one. You've done well. Wow. I'm very, yeah. It's been a really good day. And you were also in my use. Yeah, look at the little tea set. That's the very, very first thing that will be going into yeah. your chateau. <laughs> oh, I think they're lovely. Oh, that, yeah. That one's amazing. We can put some flowers in the... Oh, I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. What was in the five euro box? This. 
all of that for five euros. So what's your favorite? I really like this one. Yeah, that's nice. And the most interesting one was actually this one because there is some strange thing on the back of it. It looks like it's one to keep your poison in. I won't Yeah, lie. but there are batteries in it. No, <laughs> that's your spare battery skull. Davy said like maybe for your ear batteries that you just always have your batteries with you. <laughs> well, and most people with hearing aids would choose a skull. I yeah. David's got quite some imagination there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Venetian glass. That's Murano. Yeah, and this one is sure well. that's Murano. Yeah, so you've got two Murano ones. I mean, they would cost a lot individually in Venice. Yeah. And here? Oh, that's yes. Yes, that's another one. It's funny how when you move one away from the others, you suddenly see the beauty of it much more. Yeah. And that's got a real Tiffany vibe to it. That, I think, would be very, very elegant. I've got a moment now so I can sit down and do some of my Christmas shopping because I haven't managed to get around to doing any of it. I've been really focusing on all the decorations, which is such great fun. I've gone down this whole rabbit hole of using charity shops online because obviously we usually go to the local Emmaus, but it's actually amazing what you can find on charity shops' websites. The great thing about them is that you can find things at every price point. For example, here, I was amazed to find this a little bit out of my price range three and a half thousand euros on a charity website but then i've been looking into it and all of this is made by robert picot and he was the man who lived in the south of france in valoris near picasso and who actually made his ceramics with picasso the two of them influenced each other a lot he taught picasso how to make his ceramics and picasso is out of my price range sadly Robert Picora as well. It's not a style that would work at the Chateau anyway, but it does go to show you the extraordinary quality of the pieces you can find if you look through the charity shop websites. On a more chateau level, if you want the same feeling as the Lalande kitchen, for 85 euros, you can get 12 plates from Luneville. And I think they're incredibly pretty. And that's the same Imo's website. They have every single price range. In fact, 85 euros is rather expensive on that site. You can find things much cheaper. And it's the same story with Oxfam because Philip and I, whenever we're in London, we go to the local Oxfam bookshop and I found it online. And they have an entire section just of first editions, ranging from one pound for Santa Claus has a busy night. Sorry, what did Santa Claus do? Had a very busy night, Philip. <laughs> all the way up to a thousand pounds for a first edition of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn or 1,200 for Cyrano de Bergerac. Obviously living in such a remote area, like many people, I have to do a lot of my Christmas shopping online. And I'm very lucky because PayPal Honey have offered to sponsor this video with an ad. Honey is the number one shopping tool in America. It adds a little button to the top of your browser. And whenever you go to a website, it searches for discount codes for you. If there are any discount codes available for that website, it automatically brings them up for you. And you can make the most of those discounts without having had to search for them. It saves so much time and money. It's really convenient. Ever since I installed it onto my browser, whenever I'm randomly shopping and I've completely forgotten about it, it will suddenly pop up and say, oh, there's a 10% off code or, Oh, you could get free delivery on this order. So it's a really easy passive way of saving money on your shopping. It works on a lot of big name sites that I'm sure many of you are already using so you can save all year round. It's not just for Christmas presents. It's completely free to add Honey to your browser and you don't need to do anything after that. It literally just helps you whenever there's a discount code that you can apply. So if you want to join me in making savings on your Christmas shopping, then go to joinhoney.com forward slash chateau. And adding the forward slash chateau bit at the end will show them that you're going to them from this channel, which will be super helpful to us. But now I better get back to my Christmas shopping because there are going to be a lot of people here at Christmas. And I barely started. This is a beautiful sight. Look at you two. What are you making for tonight? Uh, cottage pie. I'm a sous chef. I think Mark and Aim will be arriving quite soon, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I did check. I don't think anybody else has checked, but I put the, I've set up a fire in there for him. Oh, okay. I can go over and put another log on if you want. Yeah. I'll go and have a look now. I'm going to see if we need to put another log on the log burner. Ooh, it's warm. Mark and Aim will be here tonight. That's why we want to keep it nice and warm. Have you ever been in this room feeling warm ever in the 17 years that we've lived here? No. Ever? No. This is incredible. This is transformative. Look how beautiful it is as well. That's oh, it is really lovely. Because I was very worried that with these burners that you'd lose the romance of the fire. Mm. And I think you gain it there. Here we do. Yeah. Very good. 
Here it's very nice. Gertrude looks happy. Strict. Does she? But happy. Okay, Gertrude looks warmer. <laughs> Let's put another log on and maybe sit here for five minutes and enjoy it. Yeah. You've made speculos. Yes, well, speculos cake. It's a La Lande version. Some things were missing <laughs> during the process, so. <laughs> Um, so it's a bit different. But the best thing is, it's filling the kitchen with the scent of spices. How's it going? It's just, I don't think I've ever cooked for more than like six people, but what's tonight? I actually don't even know how many people are out tonight. But... That's it, 13. So that's going to get to know itself, and then I can go for a bit. So this is apparently our 20, 22nd year reunion. What? Yes. yes. Is that you two met in South Africa? Three, men, three. Or yes. The three of you met 22 years ago in South yes. Africa. Wow. Yes, indeed. Brian brought you along and like, I've got these two new Dutch people. And guess what? <laughs> Let's look after them. You were the bald guy at the, the time. Was yeah. He was. He was. I remember yeah. bald Michael. Yeah, we were walking in tie-dye t-shirts by yeah. that. So. Oh, that was a happy. <laughs> Congratulations, I'm glad you met. We've had 22 years of happiness since then. Well, I mean, my happiness started, what, 18, 18 years ago? ago. Yes, 18 That's years ago. A fairly long time. It's <laughs> still not bad. <laughs> Cheers all. Oh, come on, the lost wandering soul. Come on, you've got friends too. Get this man a glass of champagne. <laughs> Yes. And if anyone is wondering why Philip is sitting there behind a computer, this is emergency last minute advent calendar <laughs> editing, which goes on basically all day, every day, even during parties. Yeah, okay. Emergency <laughs> last minute? That's normal. <laughs> <laughs> Just constant. He can't stop. Cheers. Welcome. Cheers. <laughs> it's a big moment. It's time to open today's advent calendar gift. Ooh, where is where is today's gift? This is my favorite part. Rarely is the lucky recipient this enthusiastic. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. got it. That was quick. <laughs> Go on, Michael. Isn't it adorable in Chambord? Oh, I love Chambord. You know, and the way that Jared painted the coal and sun wallpaper. That is stunning. I know it's amazing. So the first thing I need to do is I need to put back my. Charity gift. Oh, can we have a look? This is a, a portable chess set. Um, I absolutely love chess and I spend as much time as possible playing it. But none of your travel companions ever want to play with you so the traveling one can go. And uh, yeah, I'm passionate about chess. I'd love somebody else to have the same joy that I get out of it. So hopefully that goes to a nice home. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. That's brilliant. Okay. If you look over here, there is something even more exciting to play with. You can say possibly thank you. To you. He knows exactly what that is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, can I your little face? He's got a mini lint advent calendar with tiny, tiny teddy bears in it. Oh. And so now he's just like, wow, well, screw that. I want the big ones now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. He's yeah. never seen that much chocolate in one go. He is undaunted by the task ahead. I can't believe you're going. I know. I don't like it. Yeah, but I'll be back soon. So, yeah. Not <laughs> How soon? Long, How but... soon? You're definitely back days. for Christmas. Days. Actually, yeah, you'll be back in about 10 days, won't you? Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, it's not so bad. And then it's Christmas. Bye -bye. Sorry, that was me bouncing everyone, wondering why the camera just jiggled. <laughs> we had a small earthquake at the last <laughs> Oh, look how sad everyone is. Not quite sad enough to come out in the rain, but still very, very sad. Oh, I'm with a cold, I cannot go out. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Right, it's raining. I'm going to go and join the sensible people indoors. <laughs> oh, fire. That's what I needed. Look, it doesn't even sound like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing another scene on. Every time you're here, it's Christmas music. <laughs> okay. Wait, if I, I run. Yes. And as soon as this is in, we can put the whole room back in place. Mm -hmm. This is what we've been waiting for. Because the floors are done now. Ooh. They look amazing. They're so shiny and clean. It smelled nice today, no? Yeah, no. <laughs> it didn't smell nice when I was doing it. Oh, I bet, yeah. Like, oh, wow. It's been a bit overpowered. Yeah. <laughs> 
you can see behind me that the billiard room light is coming out because this was the billiard room when I first bought La Land. And we've kept the billiard light all this time. It's been our coffee table light. But Anders offered me the most beautiful chandelier. It's resplendent, just extraordinary. And as we'll be creating an area for the billiard table somewhere else, we can now put Anders' chandelier up in here, ready for Christmas. I'm so excited about this moment. Yeah, so you're saying no top chain, which I completely agree with. Yeah, yes, yeah, much really better. Yes. Yeah. I'm really sorry that you have to go, actually. I wish you could stay longer. It's been so much fun. We've really, really loved it here, and it's only because Clement has to go to school that we need to go, really. Maybe we yeah. just send him back on his own. Is that a teddy bear? <laughs> Oh, Clement, you are rocking that teddy bear, Clement. What's in your bum bum, Clement? Teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know more about this. It's the most spectacular oh. vase I've <laughs> ever seen. Just stunning. It's absolutely my style as well. It's Ardmore, it, yeah, in South Africa. They employ lots and lots of local sculptors and artists, mm -hmm. and they make this. Everything's done by hand. And it's so full of joy. Juliet has absolutely disappeared Ooh. completely. I can't see her anymore. Can't see her. She's doing peekaboo, but she hasn't really got the boobies. <laughs> <laughs> there she is! <laughs> Just peek. <Yeah. laughs> this is a very, very exciting moment. The roses are going in. Yeah. Yes. So these are the ones that you chose based on the lost rose of Nadayak. Yeah. Those of you who've been following us for some time, and especially my patrons, will know that we've been on a search to find the lost rose of Lalande. This is a rose that was called the Comtesse de Nadayac, and it was extremely popular in the mid 19th century. And I bought Lalande from the Nadayac family. And whilst they were Marquis, so the Marquis and the Marquise of Nadayac, their sons were counts and their wives were countesses. So for example, on the architect's plans, my bedroom is the bedroom of the Comtesse. So there would have been a Comtesse de Nadayac living here and the rose is called Comtesse de Nadayac. But we cannot find any trace of this extremely popular rose alive anywhere today. While it was very popular for quite a long time, because I think they started growing it in 1840, and it stopped production probably somewhere around 1910. Mm. Um, it simply got replaced uh, like people. People grow up, they grow old, and they're replaced by younger, more beautiful versions of themselves. This is uh, so sad. Huh? Oh my goodness, things have taken a philosophical turn in the courtyard today. Uh, yeah. So we went back to the original nursery that developed the Rose de Nadayac. Uh, initially. Back in the 19th century. Yeah, probably uh, the, the same company who, who hybridized this one, uh, hybridized a new variety who had the same color, but was less, less susceptible to disease or had a longer flowering period, yes. stuff like that. Um, those can all be uh, characteristics that mean that a rose is simply replaced by something more new uh, and more modern. New and shiny. Yeah, they still make new uh, uh, varieties of roses now. So we chose a rose that has the same color and the same habit, so the same uh, shape of plant and the same size, uh, to replace the original one because we can't find a trace of it. So the original uh, Comtesse de Nadayac rose was a tea rose, which basically means that it had a scent like tea. So these are tea hybrids, which means that they're a cross between the original tea roses and a more modern uh, rose. And uh, especially they don't have as many thorns as the other one. Um, which I thought was also important for the courtyard. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. The peacocks will also appreciate it enormously. Mm. <laughs> I hope you're happy here, Rosamund Janon. They should flower by June, so you'll see really quickly. Good. Well, we got three for each bed, but seeing them go in now, there's one there. They all look one tiny. There, there. There. Yeah, they do look small, but I'm beginning to think we need just two more for each bed for the ends. You might be better off evaluating that after a season. I think so. Yeah, we'll I'll live with it for one year, there. definitely. Live with it and see if they're happy, because if they're not happy here, it would have been stupid to then get even more. Yeah, true. Plus, I don't know, you might have heard there's just a couple of little expenses in the uh, chateau and chapel I might need to look at first. <laughs> I have to say that these hedges and trees and roses are very lucky that they got ordered just before I discovered what had happened in the chapel and the house. <laughs> well, they were ordered in September, so that's quite a while ago. <laughs> it is so great to see them going in. There we go. 
That's number three in. Perfect. Another nine to go. That's the first bed done. Yep. I mean, you can barely see them with the naked eye, but hopefully, <laughs> come June, that will change. I promise they're there. They are. <laughs> Bye. See you really soon. Have a great Christmas. <laughs> Bye. Beep, beep. Oh, it always reminds me of honey. I know, I always think of honey. Me too. Thank you all for joining us for another day of La Land Life. Tonight's advent video will be premiering straight after this one, and it is the great Maria playing the dance of the sugar plum fairy from Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker. I hope you all enjoy it. huge thank you to my patrons who've been an enormous support at this time. Today I'd like to say a special thank you to Karen Balliot, Sultana Al Faisal, Scott Sen, Craig A. Skinner, Laurel Lace, Erin Conklin and Zoe Dorks. Your support is making an enormous difference and you're enabling me to tackle all of the problems at Lalande. Lots of love to all of you from Lalande. I look forward to seeing you in the Chateau Diaries next week and every day in the Christmas Diaries until then. And don't forget, Maria is up next.